while a lot of Filipinos are anxious to leave the country. Belgian national Bart Van Oost has found several reasons why he's staying, and specifically in Cebu in Central Philippines. Documenting his experiences and falling in love with the Cebu's children, not given much of a chance to succeed in life. Hi, this is your adventure traveler, Lyndon Angan. Come with me as we take you to this town that could bring back innocent smile once again. It only takes a minute of going through social media to spot a negative comment or profanity real rant about the Philippines. That's why it's refreshing to meet a Belgian who's changing the conversation. Bart Van Oost is on a mission. He's out to respond that homeless children in Cebu has more to love than continue the cycle of no opportunity typecast. During a recent trip to the town of Asturias in Midwestern Cebu, I had the opportunity to know more about becoming a Filipino. Reaching Asturias town is a good two-hour drive from the city's capital of Cebu. Before reaching this town, you have an excellent view of Cebu's highlands. Passing through the uplands, you might as well make some stops to get fresh and cool air. here at Barangay Malubog in the city of Cebu. As you drive past several establishments, two must stops is a mountain resort and a cafe where adrenaline rush activity would make your travel a bit more gastronomically entertaining. Reaching Asturias town, the rough road led us to Barangay Santa Rita. where Bart and a group of volunteers from the U.S. were touring around a facility known as Rancho de Cristo to check on the site where homeless children will no longer be as defenseless as they may but a house full of individuals that has the great love the Father in them. I had the opportunity to talk to Joseph DeSarno, a dreamer at that, an American missionary that's become a Filipino, 30 plus years in Cebu, and like wine, has aged but good through the years. About five years ago, I uh, had a dream, uh, fell asleep, and I had a, a dream of a, something that looked like an ancient amphitheater, in fact. And I was seated in the middle, on the ground, in a chair. And there was like a stage in front of me, 180 degrees. And behind the stage, it was all dark, and there was flame shooting up. It was like hell. And on the stage, I saw all these little children that were being abused by pedophiles, and some of them were even being attacked and raped by wild beasts. I was terrified and uh, I began to, to perspire and I, I began to hear their moans and their cries and then in a few minutes I could feel actually the pain that they were in. So I really don't know how long that dream lasts, probably not very long, but it was terrifying. And at 
woke up and I actually heard, for the second time in my life, I heard the audible voice of God say, Joe, this is happening in your city, and I want you to do something about it. The facility and the place is beautiful. Sitting on a hill with a view as your eyes could see. We plan uh, to open one cottage. Uh, we decided on the cottage approach rather than a big dormitory institutional uh, style because we want them to get a feel for true family life. So each cottage will be like a family unit. And uh, we plan to open the first cottage on December 4th, 2015, on my birthday. It'll be the greatest birthday present that anyone could ever receive. Uh, and then uh, we, will, we will take in the first children, maybe six to eight uh, young girls. So it's a beginning. Uh, of course, uh, this is only the first cottage. Our plan is to have eight or ten cottages uh, with uh, six to eight children in each cottage. But we're going to begin small and uh, work with the children that we have while we're still constructing the next phase. The group had a short hike downhill on a bright sunny day, as Bart showed us the river stream with a fresh buco juice at that, just like any local would experience when you are in town. I asked Bart more about advocacy for Cebu's abused children. The CARE Foundation is a foundation of the Maranatha Church. Uh, we have several programs. Uh, we're really trying to take care of the, the needy and the poor people in Cebu. It's really in the heart of uh, the church and also the foundation to take care of the people that have been need. So uh, we want to share with them the love of God. Uh, we want to help them to change their lives. We believe that uh, Jesus can change, save their lives. So that's why we have, have several programs to help them. So in, in the rancho, we will take care of uh, sexually abused and trafficked children. Uh, our goal is to help uh, little girls, 12 and below. Uh, we want to bring them to the rancho, take good care of them, show them that, that they're loved by Jesus, that they're loved by the Father. Those children uh, have been abused. They, they feel like they have no value. They feel like they're trash. We want to show them that we love them and that the Lord could love them. And we really want to help them to restore their heart and to give them back uh, identity. We just want to really like, love them and take care of them. We want to see them being restored, uh, being healed. We're going to do counseling with them. Uh, we have uh, specialists in the church that are going to take really good care of them. Uh, we hired uh, house parents with really our heart for children. So we're going to take them here and we're going to change their lives. With the sincerity and drive shown by both men, it was decided to call Philippines their home. My travel to this side of town of Asturias showed me a different kind of journey. A journey to pull up lives better in a place a bit of heaven while the sun grants fills of the ranch. 